Yeah. I've been told the reason that we are in this room specifically at 188 in Westwood is because this is where the facials are done. So joined by Justin Voigt and Jessica Banks, I'm Tom Lydon. Thanks for listening to the Westwood Living Podcast. We are at 188 Fine Men's Hair Salon. And Justin, we'll start with you. How are you, first of all? Nice I'm to doing great, thanks. How so are you? Is this what you do? You, you bring people into the back room and show them the facilities? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That's one of the things we're actually going to get into, ultimately, how there's much more than just getting haircuts that is involved in, in this business. And Jessica, you and I have spent a lot of time together. Just had a haircut yesterday, so hopefully it's looking okay. Excellent. You look great. Thanks for always coming in. <laughs> Fantastic. I've enjoyed getting to meet both of you, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity of, of sharing your story with the people here in town and beyond. And uh, Justin, I'll start with you because you are the owner of this franchise here, which is on University in Westwood. And just tell me a little bit about what was your motivation to go down this path and begin this journey as a business owner and, and do what you've done. Yeah, sure. Um, I've always been one to try to challenge myself to step out of my comfort zone. I'm an engineer by trade. I do medical device development as my primary career and strategy, but something that's always sort of resonated with me is being able to help people grow in their careers. And I've done that as a people manager. Um, I come from a line of educators as well, so maybe that's part of it. But I really was enticed about business ownership to stretch what I knew, how to run a P&L, how to do a business but also how to take on a staff and motivate them to grow. And, and it's been really exciting so far. We're about a year into that. Okay, Jessica's the manager of this location, but before I start asking you some questions, you talk staff. How big is the staff here? Yeah, we're up to about 15 people on staff now, which is it's great. We're growing and we're, we're hoping to you know continue to get more people through the door who leave us really satisfied and happy customers. Okay, this is the portion of the conversation where I test you a little bit. And Jess, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test you first. 18-8. What's the history there? What's the origin? What does it mean? Okay, so 18.8 is the uh, formulation for stainless steel. So it's made of 18% chromium, 8% nickel. And the idea behind it is that stainless steel does not break down, it doesn't rust. And so it, it's kind of like an analogy for a man to come in here kind of feeling like, all right, I wanna look together, I wanna feel sharp, I wanna feel great when I'm out in society. And so we make sure that they feel and look their best. There's a certain standard when someone walks in that they have to understand. It's a little bit different because it is focused on the experience. So you've worked at a number of different places. What is it about 18.8 that stands out for you, having worked at a number of different salons? Well, you know, it's more about the experience here, right? It's also about handcrafted haircuts. So we take our our skill set to the next level. We really listen to what our guests are looking for, and we try to give them to deliver on their haircuts, but as well as a overall experience. So we want them to feel like they are so relaxed when they leave here, but they also feel and look really great. Makes sense, and I can attest to that, because first of all, you walk in and you're greeted by a very friendly staff with lots of smiles. Uh, the chairs are absolutely comfortable. It feels like you're driving a plane, right? You're in the <laughs> cockpit with like this unbelievable theater style seat. And then at the end of it, you've not only gotten a haircut, you've had a nice hot towel on your face, and you do feel rejuvenated. So all of that absolutely complements what you said. Now, there's a part of the business you'd like to grow, which touches on the room we're in. So Justin, I'll start with you. What's the motivation here, and how difficult is it to get men primarily yeah. understanding that they can come to a place like this and really begin to experience more? Well, I, I think, and maybe I'll kind of add on what Jess just said, um, it's sort of a case study in myself. I always used to go to women's salons because I liked that level of treatment. I didn't like the typical barbershop model where you'd go, there'd be eight guys or kids in front of you and you're just waiting and you get taken when you get taken. I wanted something that was much more bespoke to someone who was going to want that experience and be greeted in a certain way and have a consistent um, experience every single time they came in. And so to your question, Tom, um, expanding into you know facials and skincare sort of seemed like a natural progression of the business. We have folks who come into our chairs from once a month to once a week, right? We have all these touch points and yet we're always talking hair care and how you can keep your hair looking nice. What about skin? I mean, it's sort of the stigma that men don't really take care of themselves with air quotes right but it's it's sort of just maybe an, a matter more of education like hey have you thought you're in the chair we do a barber shave with a straight edge razor 
have you ever thought of like do you have irritated skin have you ever thought of your facial you know health and things like that and so it sort of seemed like a natural progression to get someone in the chair and then have that conversation and sort of take care of the whole person right not just their hair now be honest is the answer to that question most of the time no i haven't thought about it right so it takes some convincing and you have to tell somebody why it is important to think about that because generally speaking i, I can't tell you the last time i got a facial i mean it was probably you know two years ago Right. So, so, same and same with me, right? And I think part of it is we don't like to think of it as selling. We like to think of it as education. Like, hey, have you thought about this? Like, I see some irritation on your skin. Did you change razors? What's we can help you? This is actually an area we're we're investing in. So, so as the the manager of this place, what have you seen since you've opened? Because people have to get used to you. People have to know you're here. They have to take that leap of faith and say, okay, I'm going to open the door and check out what this is all about. What has that educational process been like? And have you learned over the course of the year um, how best to attract people in here? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, a little bit of history for me. I actually started when we opened our doors back in 2016. So to see the progression from then until now and even over the last year, I really think that we have learned to connect with our guests, understand what it is that they're looking for and bringing a level of professionalism and our craft to them to deliver, I think, exactly what people are looking for. I think everyone wants to feel good right but also they want to go somewhere where they feel warm and invited and they trust the professionals and their advice one thing that's been a habit change for me is just to your point spent a lot of years just sitting in a chair waiting my turn at a barbershop now i have to book an appointment and i have to think about it that way right. and it becomes like well if i want this level of service then yes i do need to reserve some time in the future for that right. and that's a change in behavior mm -hmm. because that was not how I rolled yeah uh, but now I know you have to start with Jess's advice like you know I'm thinking every three weeks so when you're done you're like okay book me for another three weeks and then we said yesterday it's like wow I can't believe three weeks went by because yeah. <laughs> sometimes yeah. you're not even looking in the mirror at your hair and then so you're like oh wow yeah it's it's time so is that part of the process too that you do need to change people's habits and their behaviors yeah, very much so, especially with a stylist as talented as Jess. Like, she books three, four weeks out, and most guys are like, oh, I'll book at home. And then the next time they come in, they're like, I'll rebook, please. Yeah, and it's I, just I, a lot easier. <laughs> a lot of, and you said yesterday, if you're thinking holidays now, so talk a little bit more about that, because you said that, and I didn't even acknowledge it, but I heard it, and I knew <laughs> I was going to ask you about it. And you're telling people already to be thinking about the holidays? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as, as Justin just said, um, we are teaching a behavior. But however, you know, we do get really busy around the holiday season. And I like to start putting a little, you know, twinkle in their ear. Like, hey, if you want to get in and you want to make sure that you, you can be serviced, it's a good idea to put it on the calendar. And that way, you know, there's no scrambling when the time comes, you know, oh, no, I can't get in. We are very busy. So booking in advance is, you know. A good good idea so you, you've set a standard but Justin what are the challenges T take me through some of the challenges that you have to encounter each and every day yeah sure I, I think a lot of people in general and Jess you could probably speak to this but a lot of people in general don't realize um, how difficult it is at the craft of being a barber or a stylist or an esthetician like you're on your feet all day you're working with customers and so the staff does an unbelievable job of keeping that level of energy up. Um, so trying to keep them motivated and keep them excited about the products and about um, having customers come and have that amazing experience. I wouldn't say it's a challenge. It's just something that they do such a good job at. Um, I'd say the biggest challenge for the staff is getting used to me. <laughs> I'm highly motivated. I'm high energy. Uh, I really try to bring um, a lot of vision to the salon and, and try to grow us in maybe ways that are a little uncomfortable for the team, but sort of making sure the education's there and making sure we have the Right partners I think has been a really really cool um, experience and like I said when I came on I'm gonna I'm gonna stretch you guys it's like a muscle being worked but when you look back on it you know, hopefully you feel like it was the good burn so 100% and just we talked briefly yesterday about the fact that you know some places have gone the pattern of hey rent a chair from me if you're a stylist and I have the space and you're in essence your own LLC your own company an independent contractor but Justin said to me from the beginning it was very important that that's not the model he wanted to follow that he wanted to have full-time employees how does that change the mindset of a stylist understand that there's not as much individual stress and you have the support 
of an ownership group and someone who wants to have a team and build that team and have everybody be on the same team. Yeah, you know, I think that really builds a lot of confidence, a lot of faith and trust in Justin and in the salon in itself. But having your your team around you to bounce ideas off of one another, to encourage one another and having that team feel is really important. Our staff gets along so well. We're a great group uh, and I'm really proud of everyone and they take everything in stride. It's not just men my age, like you're dealing with all ages, right? So how that's got to be invigorating too, that you you have this whole roster of people who come in on the regular because you're busy and it's almost like they're a part of your life, a little bit of a therapist, a little bit of a friend group, uh, but all ages, is that part of what you do? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we extend to the whole family and it usually starts off with dad coming in and exploring. And then, you know, he says, wow, that was a great experience. Do you, do you take care of kids? And yeah, of course, the whole family. So you know, it kind of trickles down that way. And it is nice and it's a breath of fresh air to have that engagement with children because they are so fun and they are light and they are airy. Any goals for the future? You know, this is uh, your passion, yeah. but you must have a vision of where you want it to go, where do you want it to be? Yeah, so I think obviously maintaining the level of service that we have is of utmost importance, right? So we have to grow, but intentionally grow in certain areas where we feel like we're ready to expand. So it, for me, it's continue the level of service. It's, you know, can we get, you know, the father, the son, the daughter, even the mother in. We, we cut everyone's hair. We specialize in men's hair, but we, we cut everyone's hair. And so having mom come in, we have Aveda products. We're an exclusive Aveda salon for hair care. So doing colors and cuts is something they all specialize in as well. Um, but yeah, no, I think just the opportunity that we have with facials and, and doubling down on that business and just doing education, right? Really speaking with folks in their chair from a good place, right? Really not making it feel like sales because it shouldn't be. It's here's how we can help you. Here's how we can expand. And I think sort of sky's the limit. You know, University Ave has a lot of foot traffic. Um, we do a lot of fun Instagram posts and other things. So trying to get more people that we retain as a salon in an, as an industry, it's it's tough to keep people in this place just does incredibly well. Um, and I think it's a testament to the team, to be honest. They are the people you're seeing day to day and they just crush it every day. So yeah, no, I'm excited to see what they can do and how far we can go. Well, I appreciate your time, and I wish you all the best, and I'll see you in two weeks and six days. <laughs> but who's counting? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's in the book. But that is Jessica Banks and Justin Voigt from 188 Fine Men's Hair Salon right here on University. Uh, check them out. It's 188westwood.com. That's, That's the website. So be sure to visit that and book your appointment. If you take anything out of this conversation, it's that you need to think ahead and book your appointment and really enjoy this experience. And as always, if there's somebody you feel I should have a conversation with, please reach out to me, T Leiden at bestversionmedia.com. Just tell me that person's name. I've gotten a couple emails from you recently, so I appreciate that. And I will find that person and have a conversation with them and then share it with you right here on the Westwood Living Podcast Network. But for now, from 188 Fine Men's Hair Salon with Jessica and Justin, I am Tom saying farewell. Mm -hmm.